This is a walkthrough of the deployment scripts that I've built up for Zombunity Mud. There are other ways of creating deployment tools. You can use Ant, you can use an installer, uh, you can use Make. Uh, I just chose to write Bash scripts. Um, for anybody who's new to this, I am brand new myself. These are the first scripts that I've created. I highly recommend the O'Reilly book, Learning the Bash Shell 3rd Edition, covers Bash 3.0. Jump in there and create uh, deployment scripts, whatever you use. It'll make your life a lot easier as you work on your project and deploy it on different machines. Uh, I have four scripts that I use to deploy Zombunity Mud. I have a start script that runs three others. It'll run uh, start DB to get an HSQL DB server going, load data to load data from a file into that database, and then start Mud REPL, start a closure REPL in which I can run my Mud server. So I'm going to go over those four different scripts, and the first one is the uh, start script. So I've done cat start to just print out that file. The first thing you see in these files is the shebang operator, which tells Linux that this file should be run uh, through an interpreter. And the interpreter, you specify the path here, is the bash shell. And so the shell that I'm in will take the path of this file and pass it to bash to be run. The next thing we see is a custom echo function. That function uh, takes two arguments and all arguments are optional. If you don't pass them in, they'll just be a null. And if you uh, put them in a string like this, it'll just be an empty string um, wherever they appear. So the first argument is going to be the banner text. I've got a, an equal sign banner here. So this will be the banner text. And then uh, if you specify the second argument, it'll go to the beginning. And the purpose for that argument is to put in an optional starting new line. So echo, we've passed it the dash E to say uh, interpret backslash escape sequences like backslash n for a new line. So normally we would call this just with one uh, argument and it'll print out this banner without anything in the beginning. But if we do pass the backslash n, it'll put a new line at the front. So here we see a use of that custom echo. We're calling that function with a string argument. Unlike Java or C or even closure, you don't need any parentheses to run this function. And we pass it just one argument, so it'll print that out with the equal signs on either side. So I won't spend too much time on other uses of custom echo now that we know what, what's going on there. So in start, the first thing we want to do is call line depths to get all the jars we need downloaded and put into the local repo, the local repository, Maven uh, repository, in home slash dash m2. So that will finish, and we'll have all of our jars downloaded. Some of the jars are actually uh, downloaded, cloned from GitHub with the project because I've created them uh, as custom jars. They're not in uh, a publicly available repository. The next thing we'll do is we want to start our HSQL DB server. And so we're going to take care of all of that in the start DB script. And the reason I put it in a separate script is so that you can run, start the database on its own. You don't have to run start every time. And same with load data. You can load the data into the database using its own script. Once we have the database up and running and data loaded into it, uh, we're going to put out another banner line. And then we're going to build our closure script into JavaScript. That's what this whole command does. So we'll break this down. We're going to call the line command. Line is the command to run the lineingen tool. And lineingen takes uh, one of several targets. And the target we want is the run target. So we're telling line we want to run something. And if we just specify run, it'll run uh, the main function that we specified in our project.clj file. But we can also run other other uh, functions. So we're going to use dash m to specify that we want to run the zombunity.build namespaces build function. And you'll find that in zombunity underscore web. And what that'll do is take all of our closure script and compile that using the uh, closure script to JavaScript compiler. And then it will also use the Google uh, JavaScript compiler to strip out any dead code and to uh, use uh, to link in any uh, Google closure libraries that we're using. Another banner line, this time specifying that second optional argument to get a new line because line run doesn't give us one. And the next line, we're going to run the HTTP server. So let's break this apart. Nohup says, don't run this as a child process. We need to orphan this so it'll be running on its own. And the process is line run again, specifying a main function. Only this time we're not specifying the function, just the namespace. So it will look in that namespace for the main function. 
we're going to redirect standard error and standard out to a file. That file is in this directory and it's called http.log. And then this is part of Bash's arcane syntax that I'm not particularly fond of, but it reuses the AND operator for several things. In this case, it's redirecting standard error and standard out. In this case, it's saying to run this command in the background. Since this is a command um, that is disconnected from this shell and running in the background, if we want to kill it, we're going to have to use uh, the kill command uh, because it's, it's not going to exit when this shell exits. Another banner line. And then we're going to call the script that will start our mud repl. So that's our start script. That's if we want to start from scratch. This will get everything going. The HTTP server, uh, the database, it'll load the data, everything. The next script is, I don't know if I part, actually if I pointed this out, but um, this is where we run the server. It's in the Zombunity HTTP namespace, and that, that's going to actually run uh, the Webit server that uh, opens up WebSockets. The next script is start db, and we've covered uh, the shebang operator and the custom echo function. Prints out a banner line, and it only does one thing. It runs um, the hsql db server, and it's this long line. So we'll break it down piece by piece. We've already seen no hup. This uh, disconnects this process, so it's not a child process. It's standalone, and at the end, it runs it in the background. We've seen this redirect standard error and standard out to a log file, this time hsqldb.log. So we'll cover the rest of this command. It's a Java command and we're specifying the class path and this is what gets put in the class path. It's a subshell that will call the find command in the .m2 maven repo directory looking for a file named hsqldb star.jar. The star is to find the hsqldb file with a version number inside of it and find will pass us back the path to that file and we're going to put that path as uh, specified in the class path argument so java will look in that path for the jar that we want to run or it'll look in that path for anything uh, 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 classes or jars that we can run this class against so it's going to look for this server class in that jar and then it's going to run that class with these arguments. Uh, this specifies that database number zero will be a file database called Zombunity, and that the name of the, uh, database zero, or the alias, will be Zombunity, and that's required if we want to access that again. And again, we've already covered the, the redirection to the log file and running it in the background. So that will start our database using that one command. The next thing we're going to do is load our data. This one's a little more complicated. Again, shebang bin bash, custom echo function, here we're naming, um, we're storing the name of a directory. Uh, it's, not, it doesn't, it's not implicitly the name of a directory, but we're going to use it as a directory name, and we're going to put it in this temp jar directory variable. We're going to put out a banner line, and then we're going to create that directory with make dir, and then uh, the value of that variable, which was what we put into it just up here. Notice that when we created the variable, we didn't put a, a dollar sign, but when we want the value of the variable, we attach a dollar sign. If there was anything after here that would be a valid um, uh, variable name, we would have to surround this part of the, the name of the variable. We would have to surround that in uh, curly brackets. So now that we've made that directory, we've created that directory, we're going to call find on the Maven repo, looking for anything that has db anything.jar or SQL tool anything.jar. The reason we're doing this is we need to find the db jar and the SQL tool jar and put them in the same directory. We're going to call Java with the dash jar argument to run the SQL tool, tool jar, but that doesn't allow us to specify the class path, so the db jar needs to be in the same directory, as far as I know. Once we have those two files, we're going to pass those to xargs, and for each of those files, it's going to run the copy command, and in order to work properly with xargs, we specify the destination with dash t, so it'll copy both of these files to the temp jar directory another banner line, and here's the command that we'll use to run the SQL jar uh, tool, or sorry, the SQL tool, and we'll break this down. So it runs uh, the Java command, specifying a jar, and we're going to use a find in a subshell uh, to look for that SQL tool anything dot jar, and it'll find the path to that. 
and so when we call the dash jar option it'll it'll will feed it the path to that SQL tool jar and we're going to specify our login details using the RC file argument and we're going to use another subshell to get the path to our SQL tool.rc file and this is recursive so it'll dig into zombunity underscore server slash db we tell SQL tool that we want to hit the Zombunity database, the Zombunity the database with the alias Zombunity, and we run another subshell to recursively look for a file called Zombunity.sql, which is also in Zombunity underscore server forward slash db. Now that we've run the SQL tool, we want to remove that directory with rm and the dash r option for recursive, so it'll re remove the directory and the two jar files that we put there. Now we have the database up, the database loaded with data from our zombunity.sql file. Now we're going to start a REPL so we can run our MUD server. I'll admit I don't know how to run the REPL with a script and keep it open um, and keep it running. So I'm just going to uh, run a script that will open up the REPL and just leave it there for you. Bin bash, we're used to that now. Custom echo, printing on a banner line. We need on our REPL class path to specify where we need to find where we find the closure jar, where we find our closure scripts, and then where to find the jars that our project relies on. So the first thing we'll find is where we find our closure scripts, and I've called this variable server source. We're going to use a subshell to find our working directory, and we're going to pass that to another subshell that we'll uh, call find on the working directory looking for a file with a path so i the underscore server forward slash source so that will take the path of this source directory and put that in server source now we're going to look for the closure jar we're going to call find again on the maven repo directory we're going to look for a file named closure dash one anything dot jar now if you have a 1.3 jar and a 1.4 jar that'll find multiple files we only want one of them so we're going to pass that to sort and we'll reverse the sort so that it'll uh, have uh, the closure jars in descending order of version uh, 1.4 first and then 1.3 and because there's multiple of them and we only want one we'll call head and just take the first one so that'll be our closure jar the path to our closure jar now we'll put those together as a, re a repo uh, repo class path and this really should be um, it could be called repl uh, but we are digging into the the repository so either one will work I might change that to REPL the first thing we put in our uh, REPL class path or repo class path is the closure jar so that's the first place that Java will look for the class that we're going to specify then we're going to use a colon on uh, Linux or Unix the colon is the Java class path separator whereas on Windows it's the semicolon the next thing we put in our class path is the server source so that closure will be able to find all our closure scripts and the remaining thing on the class path is we're going to do another subshell. We're going to call find on the repo directory looking for anything.jar, but where it isn't uh, a closure jar. And because this is going to come back uh, as multiple lines, we're going to pass this all to the uh, translate command and translate anything that's a line feed or a new line into a colon. So now we'll have a colon separated list of all the jars and directories. Uh, that we want to pass to Java. I have a debug uh, line in here in case you need it to echo out what the class path turns out to be. I had some trouble getting it right. And now, uh, finally, now we're going to run our REPL. So we're going to run the Java command with a class path, which is the value of our variable repo class path. And the class we're going to run is closure.main. That'll kick off our REPL. And we're going to tell closure that we want to run this script want to evaluate it and we're also going to tell closure that we want to keep the REPL open so at this point we have uh, started up our database hsqldb server we've loaded it with data we have started up uh, we've uh, actually compiled our closure script to JavaScript then we've started up our HTTP server using WebIt and WebSockets and then we've started up our REPL and uh, that'll leave the repo open and then we can start our HTTP server so all you have to do is um, run the main function in the zombunity.dispatch namespace so you can either use the ns command to get into that namespace and then run main or you can just run zombunity.dispatch forward slash main and you'll have your server up and running 
and listening for messages in the database queue. I hope this uh, encourages you to get started with Linux, Linux uh, bash scripts and uh, helps make things easier uh, to use Zombie to DMUD or to use your own projects.